This folks is a Mac SC30. Built sometime in the late 80s. I've taken it apart because it's not booting. Power is good, but there's something wrong with the motherboard. We're gonna have a look at it and try to repair it. If you ever wondered what the back of a Mac looks like, here you have it. So let's dive in, see what the symptoms are and try to fix it. Okay, so we got the main motherboard out. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of caps on here that usually have to be replaced on these old motherboards. Some surface mounted, an axial here. There's a group of three there, another axial there, one there. Uh, if you go along the board, there's one down here, another one over here. So it's just a matter of getting those repaired. Um, these are all removable ICs. So probably pulling them out, cleaning up the contacts and getting them back in, washing all this corrosion off. I don't know if you can see that, but there's quite a bit of crud around some of these pins. And basically just getting it all cleaned up, changing the caps and checking out the RAM and anything that's removable and just using contact cleaner. The back of the board is interesting. Uh, other than pretty much nothing spectacular, there's a bodge wire running here, from here to here. It looks like it's going from this IC, which is on the other side of the board. Uh, looks like this chip here to this one over here, which is that one there. So it seems to me like they run a bodge wire from this IC here to this I see here. I don't know why, I'm not sure if that's on any other Mac, but as you can see there, it looks like it's running from this pin here, the third one in, on the top side here, to, what is that, one, two, three, fifth one, in the middle, on the top side also, which would mean it's running from the third pin on this chip here, to, the middle one here on this one. Okay, and the third one on this chip to the fifth one there. So we'll have to see why that is. And if that's an afterthought from the factory, because as far as I know, nobody's ever worked on this board before, or is it actually um, standard on all these Macs, uh, you know, or some certain series of boards that they printed? We'll find out. So anyway, Next step video, you'll see me removing all the caps and basically cleaning up the board and trying to get this thing going. Uh, but first, let's show you what the Samakamak screen looks like when we try to power this thing up as is. Okay, so we've got it plugged in. Let's uh, flick the switch on this thing. Here it goes. Fan is running. Hard drive's going, you can see something's lit up in here. And there's the screen. Okay, your typical zebra pattern. So there, you're gonna see an artifact because of the uh, screen refresh rate and the camera on the iPhone. But basically, that's your typical symptoms. So let's get this cleaned up. Hopefully it'll be running okay. At least I know the hard drive's running. I see some activity. There's a fan, there's power to the unit. So that all seems good. Hopefully it's just the logic on the motherboard that's messed up. So we'll turn this off and go ahead and try to repair it. Okay, so what you'll see here is just a big broad picture of the top and bottom of the board. And um, it looks fairly good, but when you get a close up photo here, you'll notice there's quite a bit of corrosion and dust on most of the legs of the chips. And uh, I mean, I don't think that should be a too bad an issue to resolve. We can get some contact cleaner, wash it in some soap, scrub all those legs, try to see if the contacts are messed up or if any issues are there. We'll have to check continuity and just make sure that there's nothing going on. Thankfully, the battery did not leak. That's another issue sometimes that really messes up the boards. It seems to me like it's mostly the capacitors that are the issue. And uh, so there's some pictures there. You can see a little bit of that uh, leakage underneath them. 
but we should be able to get those out. The battery holder looks perfectly fine. I've took, taken out some of the uh, removable RAM as well. Uh, there's that bodge wire that I showed you on the bottom of the board. Not sure what exactly that is, uh, but we'll get all those out. Uh, and there's just some more dust on some of the components. And there you see the corrosion on some of the chips. I hope that cleans up okay, and we'll check continuity. So in this video, this next section, you'll see that I'm trying to remove these caps. Now I heard the easiest way to do it is just to basically twist and pull. Um, so you're not really trying to desolder them individually. Uh, what you'll do is you'll twist, pull them off, and clean up that plastic uh, pot bottom part that's still on the board. And usually you can get the last few little tabs off of the contacts clean up the board and you have nice fresh contacts uh, pads to solder your new caps onto. Um, so with these surface mounted ones, you can do that. Sorry about the shaky camera. I was trying to do this with one hand while holding the camera and the other. Um, you can pinch them a little bit, but you try not to squeeze them too hard. You don't want more fluid coming out. And that large cap, that blue one you see over there, I do have to desolder it uh, because you can't just twist that thing off. So you see what's left are those plastic bases, uh, but they crumble pretty easily. Uh, once you get a, a vise on them, they'll crumble and break into small pieces and come right off. You see, nice clean twist, and it preserves the pads. So it's not too hard to get rid of them. I got one more to go in this section, and then... Uh, Get the last few off, and that's it. That's a little a smaller one, so it's harder to get a grip on it. All right, so there you have it. See, that one came off with the plastic even, although there are still some legs from the component on there. So I just want to show you one particular cap, uh, C13, next to a transistor Q3 that you see there. Uh, Q3 doesn't look too bad, but it does look corroded. When I removed the C13 cap, you can see some of that fluid, that yellow stuff, just underneath the pad. And Q3 actually ended up, uh, one of the pads looked like it lifted up on the top. So that transistor actually wasn't attached. By the time I got it off, it looked like a complete mess. As you can see, there's all sorts of gunk all over the area there. But I managed to clean up the board nicely, um, got back a couple of my pads. I checked continuity on the pads. They're going great. The only thing is the one, the top one, the third pad on Q3 is gone. But I managed to connect it through a via uh, to where it was actually attached to, uh, on a trace. And we're back in business. So I should be able to get another Q3 transistor and solder it on there, no problem. So just a bit more views of the back of this machine here so you can see what it looks like. Motherboard is down in the base there. You've got a hard drive and a floppy sitting around there. We've got our fan. There's the uh, motherboard, not motherboard, the power supply for the CRT. That's a Samsung made in Korea. And in the back, what can you see back there? Anything, just a little bit on the output. Oh, it's a Sony power supply. You can see there. Um, yep, Sony power supply, Samsung screen. What's up here? Anything exciting? You know, these caps. Look like they're all in fairly decent working order. Nothing to change there. We're gonna keep the supply. All this power stuff seems to be okay. That's the power supply for the CRT. And I guess this is the power supply for the motherboard, for the actual computer, the Sony power supply. And then we've got our motherboard on the bottom here. And that's about it. The hard drive, I can't tell exactly who makes this floppy at this point. Um, I think it's Sony. I see some Sony chips in there and the hard drive. I don't know, but in any case, there it is the inside of a Mac SE and, uh, we'll give it a shot repairing.